Improvisation, the most widely practiced of all musical activities, is probably the least recognized or understood. Vague descriptions like making it up as you go along or playing off the top of your head give no idea of the pervasiveness and the power of improvisation in music. Perhaps the air of mystery that surrounds it is inevitable. Improvisation is to do with change, adjustment, development, elusive ideas. It isn't any one style of music. It doesn't belong to East or to West. But it is the creative force in these and many other musics. It's present everywhere in the most complex musical designs and in the earliest attempts at music making. The Indian city of New Delhi, like most other urban centers, attracts a kaleidoscope of migrant people, all loaded with cultural baggage, including their music. The sacred shrine of Nizamuddin has served as one focal point for Sufis escaping religious intolerance. Since the 13th century, their music has been banned by the Islamic rulers of their homeland, Iran. Through constant migrations, some Sufis found a haven in North India. The shrine also serves as a place of public congregation where accounts are kept and food is distributed to the needy. The sacred music of the Sufis is called Kavali. It is central to their ways of life and worship. Kavali ka love jo hai, wo call se nikla hai. Call ke mani hai, kisi saint ki saying, kisi buzur ka shabd. Us shabd ko, us call ko, music mein jab pesh kiya jata hai, to Kavali hoti hai. Kavali ke saath ek chiz aur zoruri hai ke khali ek gaane wala और एक कॉल को पेश करने वाला ही नहीं होता बल्कि सुनने वाला भी होता है The Kavali group improvises variations often for hours on end over a single line of sacred text This induces an emotional state that is believed to put the listener in touch with the divine It is a role that music offers in many other religions Sufis say the time must be right, the place must be right, and the listeners must be right.
Sufis settled around this shrine because they found a tolerance among the Hindu people towards their faith and its spontaneous expression through music. Hindu music, however, comes from different backgrounds, like the palaces of Rajasthan, where it evolved as high-class entertainment for local Maharajas. Born of a family that boasts five generations of singers and instrumentalists, Ram Narayan is one of India's foremost musicians. He was born in Udaipur and, as a child prodigy, played regularly in the palaces of the Maharaja. Once a year, Ram Narayan is joined by his son and daughter. Though they are both established concert performers, they enjoy a special relationship with their father, who is also their teacher or guru. method is the usual one for a largely improvised music. Imitation, repetition, exploration. Improvisation ki aajkal bohut log baat karte hain. Isme do baate hain. कि इम्प्रोवाइजेशन 200 परसेंट भी हो सकती है जो हम सीखते हैं अपने गुरु से तो गुरु तो हमें एक शरीर देता है एक बॉडी मिलती है उसमें आत्मा का प्रवेश करना ये परफॉर्मर का काम होता है तो हर एक आर्टिस्ट इम्प्रोवाइजेशन तो करना ही पड़ता है उसको लेकिन उसको उस हिसाब से नहीं करना चाहिए जिससे कि कुछ राग को हानि हो जाए लेकिन फिर भी उसकी जो आत्मा है राग की वो तो आर्टिस्ट परफॉर्मर ही लाता है उसको उसी पे ज़्यादा काम करना पड़ता है उसको इम्प्रोवाइजेशन समझिए इम्प्रोवाइजेशन ये फ्री इम्प्रोवाइजेशन तो नहीं है लेकिन फिर भी राग की पर्सनालिटी दस आदमी गाते हैं दस की अलग अलग अप्रोच होती है टूवर्ड्स राग तो ये जो है जिसको पकड़ भी कहते हैं उसको ध्यान में रख के फिर ताने बजाने चाहिए बजा as the lesson proceeds, son and daughter are allowed more freedom to improvise.
The sarangi was originally an instrument that accompanied folk singing, but Ram Narayan and his father transformed it. They changed bowing and fingering techniques to give the sarangi a new status as a featured instrument in the classical Hindustan repertoire. This offered new possibilities for self-expression. Whereas classical music in the West must not stray from the written text, here a performer is most valued for his ability to improvise. Before it was developed by Ram Narayan's family in Udaipur, the sarangi was a folk instrument played by traveling musicians in the desert regions of Rajasthan. At country fairs like the one in Pushkar, itinerant performers gathered to sell their wares. Folk and tribal performers who visit these fairs bring with them a music that is full of invention and variation.
As this music migrated north into Iran and through the Arab lands, it evolved in many different forms, adapting to and influencing each music it encountered. The music crossed North Africa and entered Spain. In Andalusia, there was a mixing of Moorish and Christian influences. This ensured that invention was still a basic part of music making. Early medieval music is today enjoying a revival, and symphony is a group dedicated to recapturing some of the music's spontaneity. Stevie Wishart studied the sarangi in Rajasthan and uses the same tuning on her fiddle. In the music of the early medieval period, improvisation was mostly instrumental, decorating the vocal line. Like the Moorish themes that decorate the palaces of the Alhambra in Granada. Even within the formal setting of a Moorish palace, improvisation survives through a practice which is largely oral. The oral tradition, I think, was very important in the uh, troubadour music that we're performing, um, because music was indeed uh, written down. That, of course, is how we know of its existence. But it wasn't uh, written down in order to play. It was just uh, written down for posterity, as it were. And we're pretty certain that the um, music, and possibly even the text as well, were semi-improvised um, and certainly taught through an oral tradition. You know, there is a Moroccan proverb which is msawiya mshaliya had al khadma which means first you tune the instrument then you tune the musician while improvising a kind of prelude and afterwards it's perhaps the greatest is to accompany the voice because the first instrument is not the fiddle is not the the lute it's the voice you know in the oral tradition and uh, the the other idea is to decorate the, the song she is singing. She is going to uh, reach a certain note, and I'm waiting for her at that note and making some design around this point, you know. Well, we know that, uh, that in the treatises that were written at the time, they talk about rhythmic modes, and those rhythmic, rhythmic modes, like in the pieces that we've, we've been playing, might be something as simple as... And you soon realise that there are lots of things you can do on the instrument, and I think anyone with any imagination would have found variation. So with the rhythmic mode... You can develop the rhythmic mode to be something a lot more elaborate and a lot more improvisatory.
In contrast to the courtly setting of the troubadour music, the caves facing the Alhambra have offered a home to Roman gypsies since they first migrated here in the 15th century. Their music mixed Moorish with Andalusian to become flamenco. Many of Spain's flamenco performers grew up in the Sacramonte, and when they found success, moved on. In the Andalusian city of Seville, a group of gypsy dancers and musicians have been brought together by one of Spain's outstanding dancers, Mario Maya, who grew up in the caves of the Sacromonte. The Solear is a dance that developed in the gypsy suburb of Seville. Its lifeblood is its spontaneity and invention. Es como si le preguntas a un, a un músico sobre, sobre una medida, él conoce perfectamente la música, entonces las escalas determinadas las improvisa él. Eh, el ritmo existe. Es muy difícil eh, clarificar bien en una conversación y sobre todo en un corto espacio, qué es la improvisación. Yo pienso que la improvisación es conocer perfectamente los ritmos conocer en este caso el flamenco y sobre esa música flamenca uno tiene el dominio de ese ritmo y sobre ello e improvisa la improvisación es muy difícil de explicar eh, es como el duende ¿qué es el duende? pues eh, es un estado de ánimo de, determinado o sea la improvisación es el alma de la persona simplemente lo que eh, oye y lo que puede hacer en ese momento. Claro, para eso hay que tener una, una técnica superada.
Lo, yo creo que el flamenco se ha creado y se ha criado en Andalucía. Eh, lo que ha, hayamos aportado los gitanos es una forma de sentir y de ser, pero andaluces. Los gitanos de otros países, digamos de Hungría, Checoslovaquia, Rumanía, no hacen flamenco. Hacen otro tipo de música que ellos imprimen uh, de una forma especial. Pero eh, el baile flamenco es andaluz 100%. Ahora, la influencia que nosotros mm, traigamos inconscientemente puede que tenga una reminiscencia antigua de, de la India, porque nosotros emigramos hace muchísimo tiempo, uh, creo que vivimos ya cinco siglos en Andalucía. Quiere decir que es posible que tenga unas connotaciones hindúes, digamos, de las manos, ¿no? de la forma de poner las manos, y también de los sonidos, de los pitos, eh, la, la profundidad de los apateados hincados en la tierra, siempre hacia adentro, igual que el katak, y que hacen contratiempos o contrapuntos, siempre improvisando sobre una música y haciendo los des, ¿Cómo se llamaría? Los compases a contratiempo. Though flamenco may derive from Katak, its social context, the caves and camps of a persecuted people, is quite different from the high art status that Katak still enjoys in its homeland. Katak, itself derived from folk dance, is now a combination of mime and movement, where improvisations develop within a complex rhythmic pattern. Katak is taught to aspiring students by Birju Maharaj, acknowledged as the finest Katak dancer in India today. His family developed it from storytelling into stylized classical dance. Birju Maharaj improvises over rhythmic patterns whose similarity to flamenco are close enough for him to have danced with Mario Maya in earlier days. अलग-अलग मूड्स की तिहाई, अलग-अलग डिफरेंट जैसे कि हमारे एक आया कि हमने बताया था कि एक तिहाई जिसमें जैसे डियर ये काउ है, काउ धीरे से चलता है, एक दो तीन चार पांच छः सात, एक दो तीन चार पांच छः सात, द डियर, एक दो तीन चार पांच छः सात, द डियर पांच छः सात, और लाइन का होता है एक दो � different different moods आते हैं rhythm में भी ऐसा जरूरी नहीं है कि वहाँ पर song हो ऐसा जरूरी नहीं है
Improvising within the rhythmic patterns of the music, Birju Maharaj mimes the part of a female lover of Lord Krishna, a central character in Indian mythology. <laughs> Though modern masters of Katak make little reference these days to its humble folk origins, early forms of this dance have been carried out of India by itinerant gypsy performers on their many migrations. They crossed Europe and North Africa on the same trade routes as the medieval music we traced earlier. Gypsies can still be found in many places on that route. In Egypt, from whose name the word gypsy derives, they are known as Khawazi, invaders of the heart. These migrations symbolize the story of all performing music, which must continuously adapt through improvisation if it is to survive. So every dance has evolved a style to suit a place and time like gypsy flamenco, which flourishes still in Andalusia. It's not some fossilized art form, but the living expression of the Spanish Romani people. Bueno, mi historia es como la de cualquier otro niño gitano en el cual nacemos en el seno de una familia gitana en el cual toda la cultura de los padres, los abuelos, se, se aporta en ese, en, en, cuando tú eres pequeño. Eh, todas tus vivencias transcurren alrededor 
de, esa, de ese movimiento cultural. Mario Meyer performs a bullerias, one of the most popular and heavily improvised gypsy dancers in a style very much his own. One musical journey found a point of rest in flamenco. From another journey came an urban folk music of Latin migrants to the New World. Salsa mixes Spanish dance with the rhythms of Cuba and Puerto Rico. Eddie Palmieri is a legendary figure of Latin music. The word rumba was brought by the rumba flamenco that they have in, in, in Spain. And Spain being the, the country that brought the, it superimposed their, not only their language, but everything they believe to the black African that was brought over by force to the island of Cuba for, in particular. Uh, the the word rumba became like the mother of the wonderful rhythmical scales that exist in in Cuba and that fed us throughout the 20s the 30s the 40s the 50s and Cuba was feeding us in New York rehearsal in a midtown manhattan club is confined to basics the essentials are saved for later when Eddie Palmieri will lead his band throughout the show from the keyboard. The percussion type approach to my playing has to do with my influence of being a frustrated drummer. Little by little, I saw myself being brought back to the piano. The percussive instrument that it is, once those hammers hit the strings, then it's a percussive instrument. I utilize that in quite a unique way uh, to excite the rhythm section also in my playing. I utilize it in my free form of when I play uh, a variation of a theme. Eddie Palmieri's piano variations will be a high point of an evening's dancing to a salsa band whose rhythms are based on the distinctive clave, which is laid down by the percussion section.
Band leader, arranger, and composer, Eddie Palmieri is best known to his Latin audience as one of salsa's great improvisers. of no tomorrow energy fueled by the musicians reveling in their own inventiveness.
next week, how improvisation liberates the musician and facilitates creativity. That's next Sunday on 4 at 8.30.